Hi, welcome to my YouTube workshop on map journals. It's really like having me with you um, with lots of ideas that I do in normal workshops. This one's on map journals. You can find a lot of the uh, templates for free or some of them for free on my website zapple.ca. Alright, well let's get started. Actually, what's, what's this topic about? We really want to get kids to talk. That's what we really want to do with math journals. We want to get them to talk, to communicate, to write, and converse, and so on. Something that's really tough for kids. Before we do that, I want to take a look at um, where we can get some of these templates. Here we go. Here's my website. I'll just get this over with, then we'll continue. Zapple.ca. All you have to do is follow that paper clip coming up right now, which is on, which is going to the free stuff section. Just go there. I've, just added about 15 new things. Um, lots of stuff there. Just download to your heart's content. There's no catches. It's all free. Okay, so let's think of us as adults. Why might we journal in our lives? First, we might want to solve tricky problems. We might want to write about it um, from our point of view until we can solve them. Uh, we might want to gain clarity with something in our lives. Uh, number three, we might want to verify our progress with something that we're learning new. Same thing with kids. We can solve tricky problems, we can help kids gain clarity, we can help kids verify their progress. So much like what we do in real life. Here's idea number one. Take some nutritional facts, get kids to list differences they notice, get them to talk about it, get them to write about it. What do they notice? Plus, it's important information. Now, when kids are shopping, when we're shopping, there is something that I just really didn't really notice before until I started looking for it. You can help kids be more aware of how words change numbers and numbers change the words. This is why words are really important in math. It's not just numbers. Um, for example, when we go shop, we can see 30%, 45%, 25%, and so on. When we remove those little pieces to see the words, we can see, wow, there's a lot of things here that change the numbers. Save an extra 30% off on already reduced prices, limited time, um, on regularly priced fashions, 25% off, up to 70%. For 99, for a dozen? No, half a dozen. So words and numbers are really, really important, and that's why um, it's great to get kids to write, to converse, and to communicate in math. First idea, whether you're starting a unit, partway through a unit, or near the end of a unit, let's say you're studying integers. Ask kids where are positive and negative integers used in real life, and then ask them to then circle in their groups, get them into groups. Circle maybe the top two that applies to them, that are most important to them. You'll start to see very quickly what are important to kids um, as they start the unit or they're partway through the unit or maybe even near the end of the unit. Integers are tough. This is a, a lottery ticket from, the U, uh, from Britain and uh, a lot of adults, you don't have to read all that, it was just pulled from the shelves because a lot of adults didn't know which temperatures were higher and which temperatures were lower. Is negative 4 lower than negative 7? Yeah, it must be, but is it, right? And so on. So even adults get really confused and find it tough um, with some of these topics. And so that's why journaling is, is really important. You can use a math response template. I've done this because just to get kids to write a line paper to start here, write some of what we did today can get kind of boring. So I provide kids with some templates, and that was one of them. Um, something you might want to try at the beginning of the year, during the year, and at the end of the year is how do you see yourself as a math learner? This is powerful stuff. Um, I was amazed what kids said. And here's, I'll just read part of what one girl said here in my class. And she said that she really understands what she's learning. She's struggling. Um, she likes to struggle together. She likes to take risks and so on. These are some things I never even knew about this student, but this journal really helped me. Let's go back for a moment to outcomes, or benchmarks, state, provincial, whatever. Uh, these are from the WNCP up in Canada, and um, when I was looking at the outcomes or benchmarks, I was amazed at the words in the outcomes. Demonstrate, describe, show, apply, develop, perform, and so on. But we'll come back to that in a minute. The important thing to do is when you're going through your state or provincial uh, benchmarks or outcomes, take a look at those words. Apply, skip, explain, describe, compare, represent, estimate, demonstrate, identify. Look at all those things here that you can see. Perform, um, demonstrate, determine. I mean, it goes on and on. So here's what I did. I wrote down the verbs on the left-hand side, the things that I saw in the IRPs, 
And on the right hand side, I started to write down, well, what are some things that I ask kids to do with communicating? Is it just on a line piece of paper and say, what did we do today? Is there more to it than that? Do I just give kids tests and look for the right answers? And that's okay, but if that's all I do, um, then maybe, you know, are we doing the IRP verbs? And so on the left hand side, um, again, I start to write down the different things here that I notice with the kids. On the right hand side, here's an example, maybe um, written journals. Maybe we do comic strips, and I'll show you one of those examples in a second. On the left hand side, you can see here that I'm looking at different verbs, right? Say, recognize, and so on. Now, what I've done is after I started to write these things down, this is great to do with your staff or with a teacher partner, is to go through your IRPs, uh, your outcomes, your benchmarks, and take a look. The important thing to know here is that we're asked in, in British Columbia here to do a lot of these things concretely, pictorially, and symbolically. So how can I build some of those things into um, the math journals? What I did after that is I gave um, some letters. So written journal, I put W. Comic strip, maybe C. And then I went back and, well, we can demonstrate in a written journal, for instance. right? So that matches there. Um, oops, I forgot graphic organizers. So maybe I could write down graphic organizers as a way to get kids to represent. So, oh, so what kinds of verbs or what kinds of things can kids do when they're using graphic organizers? Well, they can do it symbolically. They can write down things in graphic organizers and so on. This is a, it might seem like, oh, why are we doing this? But it's a really, really important step. The other thing to note is um, what I love about the outcomes here in British Columbia and across most of Canada is on the right hand side there are lots of clues in the IRPs uh, how we can keep track of these they're called achievement indicators okay another good thing to do to get kids to start to think about in their math journals is to find things in your um, in your textbooks or resource that you're using this is math makes sense uh, published by Pearson and I really like the way they have um, prompts to get kids to think and to write and to communicate um, often these are built in right into the textbooks and so you don't have to think of something different or something new. Um, and so for example if I look in the teacher guide here where it says before getting started I can see some things there to help me prompt the kids. And then we can build from there and so a t-chart's a wonderful thing to do with kids to get them math journaling. Where do we estimate in real life and where do we come to exact math? I like to call that about math or exact math. And so those are some things to do. Now we can get kids to write in their math journal to review what we've already done. And one really cool way to do that, it was blew me away, I'll just show you an example or two, but one way is to get kids to think about, well, what, what have we done so far, for instance, and you might try this with your kids. And so I asked kids to write a letter to the Minister of Education, why should we keep multiplication in the outcomes or benchmarks, or why should we take them out? And it was pretty amazing what kids wrote. It was amazing. For example, in multiplication, uh, this student said multiplication speeds up math. The last student said multiplication is a shortcut for repeated addition. Um, really helps us to see what kids understand and it's a nice way um, to do it rather than just say what did we do yesterday. So pretend that the new IRPs or outcomes or benchmarks are going to be missing blank. Think of the strand you might be working on that. Write a letter to the Minister of Education arguing whether it should be kept in or out. Pretty amazing. A great review for kids too. Here's another thing that I've developed. Again, there's a, a sample on my site called Aftermath. And um, this is a great way that kids can be interactive with each other. Uh, they can approach it from a variety of ways. It doesn't look just like a math journal, so it's engaging for kids. And finally, it's foundational. And I don't mean, you know, times, tables, and additional subtraction. You've got enough of that in your closet or your uh, cupboard. And, um, so it's foundational in the sense it looks at estimation and mental math, things that are really key for kids as they're working through their math. So here's, um, well, the cool thing is, and I've already mentioned this before, is that you can get a sample from, there's a set of 10, and you can get a free sample um, on my website right here. If you go under free stuff and scroll down, it's free. Look for mental math strategies, and you can try it with your kids and see what they think. You'll notice when you look at the, the aftermath template, let's take a close look here at one of them. Um, the